Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We start a wonderful new show called Senior Moments. Once a week for about 15 minutes, we talk to all your seniors and younger if you'd like about things that can help you to make life a little bit easier. I'm very lucky to have Lauren Moses with us today. Lauren, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Another University <laughs> of Maryland graduate. Well, you got it made, young lady, okay? <laughs> Uh, Lauren does PR work, public information work for the Sheriff's Office, and you've got a topic today that I think is great. I get 10 to 15 phone calls a day. Mm -hmm. Someone saying, do you want to buy insurance? Do you want this? Give us all your secret numbers and mm -hmm. we'll do whatever you want. So Lauren, help us out. What do you got? Tell us what you got. Here. Well, Fred, our office cares about our community. Sure it does. And one thing we're noticing is the increasing, uh, increasing claims of people getting telephone scams. Sure. And so as the public information officer, I make sure I decimate all type of information and alerts saying that this is a scam, be aware of this scam. However, what I've noticed is that we're putting so much on social media, right. but our vulnerable adults, they aren't on social media. So they don't, they're not getting the information you want to give. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, what drives me crazy, they get local numbers now. Mm -hmm. 758 on your phone. Hi, this is worldwide. I mean, it's just crazy. And if you're a senior that's isolated, it makes it tough. Okay? Yeah. So what are some tips? What are some things you're warning us about? Of to course. Help us out? So I want to agree with you when mm -hmm. what you said is that they are using local yeah, numbers. Yeah, how can they get a 758 number? <laughs> Honestly, scammers are getting craftier by the is minute. That right? okay. They are. They will use a Kent Island number. They'll use a Chestertown number, mm -hmm. and you would think it's a local family member yes, or friend, yes, so you'll yeah. pick it up. Because we're taught if we see 800 numbers or any type of weird numbers to ignore it, but what do you do when you have a local number? Sure. So unfortunately, you will, you will be subjected to take the call because you just don't know. It drives you crazy. The only redeeming factor is usually there's a pause. You know, if it's your son, it's, mm -hmm. hey, Dad, what are you doing tonight? Exactly. And usually there's a, when you answer, there's a pause, and as soon as you hear that pause, you know, get off, get mm -hmm. off. Uh, but no, I have friends that kind of, they're constantly saying, hey, I got a good deal for magazines. Next thing you hear, they get 28 magazines exactly. coming to their house. <laughs> and it's no good. And one thing we also have to think about is that a lot of these vulnerable adults are a bit lonely. Yes. They are living at home or maybe their spouse has passed away. So even if it's somebody they don't recognize on the phone, they might just they want, want that. They want that communication. Sure, sure. So that, that opens up more ways to unfortunately scam those. Yeah. So what we want to talk about is not just blocking the numbers or being wary of the numbers. Pay attention to what the caller is saying. Okay. If so the caller is alluding to anything using Google Play numbers or send me your personal information or your computer has been hacked, any of those key uh, explanations, anything like that, you have to be wary of that. Okay. And one thing I want to let everyone know is that a police agency would never ask for payment to expel a warrant. Never. Well, my favorite is that a friend was telling me the other day, this is the IRS calling. Mm -hmm. We found your account. And then you call the IRS. We don't make phone calls. We send you letters. You know, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So the first thing you're telling us, listen to what they're saying on the exactly. phone. Exactly. Okay, that's number one. Okay. Yes, and the thing about it is that a reputable agency would never ask you for your personal information over okay. the phone. They have it already. All right. And so you have to be wary about that. And one of the more crazier or uh, peculiar scams that I've heard of is someone being contacted, told that their DNA was found at a crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It yeah. happens. I'm and sure in order to clean up this whole thing, they would need their payment, personal information, all of this stuff. And you have to think, if my DNA is found, why do you need my... It's just, these scammers are trying to try anything Any to get... Mm -hmm. get. Now, Lauren, look, before we, as we go down your list, the first thing, you shouldn't give out any personal information. Exactly. Social Security. I mean, my favorite is, your credit card is delinquent. Would you like us to extend <laughs> the amount? By the way, give us your credit card number when mm -hmm. it expires and the secret code on the back. Mm -hmm. So don't give that stuff out, right? No, do no. not give out any personal information over the phone. Okay. If you have a person who is impersonating a police agency or the IRS, hang up call the right number to the IRS or the police agency and they can confirm if you okay. do have a warrant or if they have an issue with whatever is going on, whatever company you're talking about, but they would never ask you for personal information okay. over You can see how people are scared. If you're a senior citizen, mm -hmm. I mean, I, look, I, 
when I deal with the police, it's yes, sir, yes, ma'am, mm -hmm. and I'll do whatever you say. But you can see how it, you know, it scares them. You mean if I pay $50 now and tell you my, uh, this will end? Okay, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's great. And it's, it's very sad, and that's why we try to create as much awareness as we can. Good for you guys. Because that way when the incident actually happens, because I'm not sure if you know, but 70% of the telephone scams are targeted to seniors. Oh, 70 percent. 70 percent. Because we're easy targets, right? Exactly. Oh, wow, that's scary. I didn't realize it was that large. So how do they, do you know how they get, how do they get that information? Are honestly, you know? I'm not sure. It's one, I do know one outlet and one way that they do get that information is if you give out your email, it's certain things if you sign up for. Okay. There are companies that will sell your email address, personal information, right, anything right. like that. There are people well, that can... I think that all of them do, but I'm beginning to think. I mean, yeah. Facebook, the Facebook world, well, and I'm sure you're going to talk about this, social media hurts us for this stuff, right? It can, and you have to be careful. And that brings me to another thing. Yeah, yeah. You have to be careful what you put on social media. Okay. It's just not your family and your friends that's looking at this okay. stuff. It's people you don't know. They're looking at your children. They're looking at your children's names. They're looking at your parents' names. So when they call and they say your son's name, you're automatically thinking, this is, this is a family member, this they know my son. Please be careful what you put on social media. Please don't think it's just your family and your friends that's looking at this information. It's, it's anybody. I heard, uh, I heard in church one Sunday a person said they got a phone call. This is to tell you that your son, Jonathan, this is an accident in Dover. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to help him out. Could you pay the initial cost for, you know, medical costs? You know, I mean, my son, you know, my, uh, you know. Like mm -hmm. you said, you know, a family name, Dover's close. Yeah, he goes to Dover. Uh, it, you can see how it gets confusing. It can be pieced together so yeah. quickly. Scam. And it will sound so good, you would never think it's a scam because if someone told you that your family member was involved in an accident, you're not going to think scam. You're going to think, oh my gosh, I got to do something to help. I want my children safe. Yes. Exactly. And 70% of the scams are geared to us seniors. Yes, sir. Lordy, Lord. another advantage of growing old. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. What else you got on your magic list here? Yes, sir. So I also have, I talked about the Google Play card. So that is a key factor. If you get a call and they are asking for payment in Google Play cards, your, 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 the hair on your arm should stand up right Don't then do and there. It. Drop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Do not hang up. Don't even proceed with that call. Okay. So that was another thing I wanted to definitely make sure I put out there. Let's see what else we have. I did mention the law enforcement agency, and this is another uh, scam, the, the large inheritance. So you have someone call you and it says, hello, your family member, long distant relative, you may not know the name, mm. has left you an inheritance. Oh, right. In order for you to claim it, you must submit this am X amount of money, and once you do that, we will be able to release it to you. you. Due to, to government rules and regulations, we have to follow this procedure. It is a scam. It's a scam. It is a scam. Well, let me ask you, let me interrupt you for a second. Of that 70%, we're, this, just, this number is shocking me. The 70% they hit us seniors. Do we have, how many times are they successful? Honestly, I'm not sure, no, but okay. I do believe that it's about $420,000 on average that can be taken from a senior. Lord. And people just, whether it's family members or mm -hmm. whatever, they just give the money. That's scary, isn't it? It's very scary. And people are too embarrassed to say anything. They are. And you know what? When I was talking to Sheriff Hoffman, because this is an issue that he really wants sure. to take on sure. and he wants to raise awareness, this is very underreported. Oh. For what you said, people are embarrassed. embarrassed. Some people don't know they were scammed. Some people think that they did the right thing. They think that they given that money, now they no longer have a warrant out for their arrest. Right, right. Then they don't realize. And what I see as a public information officer when I do write those press releases is, a lot of people don't know it's a scam until they talk to a family member. Yeah. And then a family member points out, wait, that doesn't sound right. Let's go investigate this further. Then they know, wait, I've been scammed. Yeah. Like you said, embarrassed, and now they don't, they don't even know. Mm -hmm. Can, let me, let me, as I'm jumping around here, mm -hmm. if someone thinks they are a victim or about to become a victim, can they call you guys? Yes, oh, you okay. can call us, especially if there's been money lost. Please call us, because we like to investigate it okay. as, as soon as possible. Okay. I'm sorry. The only thing I want to say is that once the money is in the wrong hands, it's almost gone. impossible. It's gone. 
it's gone. It's almost impossible to get back. Let me ask you this. I, I have friends who, my age who are getting these phone calls. Do we know how many people have been affected in this county? How, many, how often do you deal with this as an agency? I'll be honest. I, I don't keep track, no. but I get so many. I would get maybe really? three a week. Three people Three a week. I would have people messaging me, message Sheriff Hoffman, message our page, give us a call, mm -hmm. saying they may not be fall victim to it, but okay. just to report it. Report it. And it's not even t only telephones. It's letters, it's emails, it's all types of things. It could be an email simply saying that you have won this and that, and if you give us your email, okay. we'll give you your... It can happen anywhere. My favorite is, uh, yeah, you're... Uh, you've been you've inherited ten thousand dollars. Send us five thousand, and we'll get you the rest. <laughs> oh, okay, just reel them in. Mm -hmm. right? And to us, it sounds like it's too good to be true, uh, but unfortunately, to some people, they may believe it. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm hoping I win the lottery this week. So if someone <laughs> tells me I've got a million dollars, whatever. So the big thing is, as we go along here. Don't give out personal information. Don't give out personal information. Be aware of what you put on social media. Okay, okay. be aware of social media. And also, when in doubt, call the sheriff's office mm -hmm. and say, look, I think I'm a, a victim. I mean, my favorite is uh, we had a, a situation. Did you ever catch up with a person who was driving around the shopping centers and telling people a relative of theirs was in a terrible accident? And I did hear of that. And then, I mean, this, it happened in front of our church one day. Mm -hmm. Oh, could you please help me out? Little Johnny was in an accident. I can't get him out, could you, and I'm running out of gasoline. I mean, all these things. Mm -hmm. Be careful, right? Yeah, be careful. And as seniors, we like to think we're helping out. We're just making it worse. We're mm -hmm. encouraging them. To, well, if we've got countries stealing information from other countries, you know they're going to hit you and I. All you have to do is hit 100 people at $100, and it's not a bad day's it work, can be, it? It can be a regular daytime job. I mean, it's crazy. And there are people doing this full time, mm -hmm. all right? Now, any other words of wisdom you want to give us? Uh, I think I may have covered everything, okay. but one thing I want to say is that there is no get-rich schemes. There okay. are just none. If it sounds too good to be true, it's, a it's too good to be true. And another thing, um, I know this show is targeted to vulnerable See, adults. We talk but, to everybody. But if you do have your grandmother, grandfather, or any vulnerable adult you know, please talk to them about this. We want to raise as much awareness as possible okay. because this can also target the younger, sure. younger crowd. So just make sure you talk to your family members about this. This could be a dinner table discussion because this is affecting our community. Now, Lauren, if the, let's help them out a little bit. If someone's watching this now and says, "Jeezy, peasy, I'm either a victim or they're trying to get me, give, me, give them your name and number to call again at the Sheriff's Department. Yes, so what I would like to do, if you have any, if you've been a victim of a scam, or if you've received the email, a letter, what I like to do is put out as many alerts as possible. Okay. And then that way, if someone else sees the alert, they are already like, hey, I've seen that on the Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Right. I know what that's about. So you can give me a call. My name is Lauren Moses. I'm the public information officer at the Queen Anne's County, also the Sheriff. And you can call me at 410-758-0770, extension 1271. Okay, and they can get a hold of you. Now, are there pamphlets? I know she had a pamphlet. Are there yes, pamphlets? I do. Okay, now where we, can they get those? Yeah. You can also get these pamphlets at our office. We do welcome our visitors, and it gives you all types of information from cons and scams to the top scams that uh, vulnerable adults face, how to not be fooled, and... It says right here, $40 billion is made every year from telemarketing phone scams. Mm. That's crazy. And 70% of those things are directed mm -hmm. towards us senior citizens. Yep. Shocking figure, right? Mm -hmm. Shocking. And that, again, if they, call, if they call you and say, Lauren, would you send me one of those? Can you send them one of those? Definitely. Okay. I will have no problem. We're actually working on getting these out to uh, local retirement homes. Right. Just right. doing a short speech, just letting them know. And just, again, just promoting that awareness. Anything we can do, we, we want to help because this is a concern in our office and we, we really do care about our community. Yeah, and, and as much as we like to think we're nice and safe in Queen Anne's County. It's here. You've heard of cases. Mm -hmm. I've heard of cases, whether it's phone calls or letters or get rich schemes. They're out there and they want your money. So they don't they care do. who you want. They want their money. They, they don't care if you have lo recently lost your spouse. They will use that information. They don't care what you're going through. Their whole mindset is how do I get this person's money? And so when these people call you, don't be afraid to hang up. 
Don't be afraid to question this person further. Why are you calling me? Why do you need my personal information? How do you know? Do not be afraid because these people have one motive and it's not you, it's to get your money. Okay, and then it's real simple. So, uh, careful social media. Mm -hmm. Don't give out personal information, and when all else fails, give you a call and say, help, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those seniors and they're picking on us, help me out. Does that sound good? That does sound okay. great. Now, Lauren, look, I always end the show with a poem, so let me read this. We read a poem at the end of the show. Of course. And it's for seniors, all right? Mm -hmm. And this is called Clearing the Way by a Laura Knight. Uh, I have waited quite a long time to get old, so I think I, think I should try to enjoy it. I can't turn it in for a refund, and I surely don't want to destroy it. They tell me that life is a one-way street, as if I am too dumb to know. I might as well keep moving on forward. There's not much choice where to go. I'd like to lighten the luggage I've accumulated over the years. I'd be smart to release all the memories that brought heartaches and tears. That would make living much better, free up space that could be filled, with appreciation for the good things in life, with the promise that I could build. A future that lives for the moment, with little concern for the past, my time will be filled with contentment, no matter how long it will last. So now that I'm ready for the rest of the trip, I foresee no problems ahead. I'll make each day a worthwhile event, with no regrets for the life I've led. That okay. is a beautiful poem. Well, thank you. Well, Lauren, that wasn't too bad, was no, it? No, okay? it wasn't. It's was perfect. And the University of Maryland, that's win something this year. Right? Okay, then, so. That's another segment for another day. I'll kill us all. Okay, so. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for joining us today and joining us on TV7. Seniors, we're an easy target. 70% of the scams are headed towards us. If you have questions, give Lauren a call. Call the Sheriff's Department. Just ask for help. Again, my name's Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're gonna see you next time.